Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome aboard to our session on email marketing. One, two people still arriving, so we'll um, we'll let you in the door for today's extravaganza. Uh, it's very, you know, it's um, really nice uh, to uh, see some familiar faces. Yeah, great. So uh, anyone who has attended a, a, a webinar before of mine, welcome back. For those of you who are new, well, it's great to, to see you. We have a, a set format for the afternoon. Uh, the format is very simple in that uh, we have the chat line, so please feel free uh, to use that. Uh, we, we are uh, recording today as we, um, as we do. Uh, make sure everybody is muted. I hope you don't mind. I don't want to um, create any unnecessary noise. So hit the chat line. Um, we'll record it so it'll be available on the Humber Growth website and also uh, Marketing's YouTube channel. You'll get a copy of the slides. And uh, if you want to say anything, social media, there's the tagline. And as always, for those of you who happen to avail themselves, there's the opportunity for a little bit of one-to-one -one help. So, you need all about email marketing. Now, I've put, I'm just saying before the webinar started to some of the early uh, visitors, I, I think I've set myself a bit of a challenge because it's a big topic. So I'm gonna, there's quite a lot to cover. So I'm gonna whiz through this, but we always find time for our normal introduction, a bit of a, a, bit of a light hearted quiz to get us going. Uh, the will, I will contrive uh, some jokes in as well during the course of the afternoon to keep you entertained and hopefully finish in time to uh, take some questions. A bit of a quiz. A quiz. Fun, just a little pen and paper, and all you have to do, well, you have to have a pen and paper, you can just, it's all about guessing who a famous business person is. So, who is that? Does everybody know who that is? Late lamented what we got on the chat line oh he's in straight away kevin yes kevin you are correct that is none other than steve jobs if you ever get to see the film steve jobs well worth a view particularly for the performance of of kate winslet not that i'm a film critic of course but i i, I enjoyed that very much so who's up next then there's a bit of a theme to these actually does anyone who know who that is ah Let's have a little look on the chat line. No, nobody seems to know. Well, hey, I know somebody. No, it, this gentleman is called Ray Kroc. And there was another theme, because I've already mentioned the film Steve Jobs, but well worth a view, the film The Founder, which has got Michael Keaton in, and it's all about how McDonald's came far more than just a, a, a burger shop or burger takeaway in California. And this was a guy who took the business forward, who actually was a supplier to McDonald's, uh, a ruthless businessman, maybe described. Anyway, let's move on. Who's that? I don't think there's a film being made about his life, and if there has been, um, who's that then? Who have we got there? We've got two on the chat line. Yeah, Michael and David and Kevin are all on. Oh, Lynn as well. Oh, yes. The none other than the philanthropist, I so may describe him, William Gates, Esquire. This gentleman may, is a very wealthy man. I wouldn't describe him as a philanthropist unless I'm proven otherwise. Do you don't know who that is? Oh, who's got this? Who's got the, Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, David and Michael and... Oh, easy one, isn't it? Warren Buffett. Sage of Omaha. He, you know, he, lived, he still, he still lived. He still lives in the same house that he's always lived in, despite being in the top three wealthiest people in the world. I think. And eat all you can. Yeah. Right. Who's that? So Warren. Who's that then? Whom is that? Anyone want to tell me who that might be? Another well-known, slightly controversial businessman. Yep. David's got it on the case. Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, recently married to Jerry Hall. Yeah, a bit like that question, Mrs. Merton. Remember Mrs. Merton This once said to, uh, to what was her name, Debbie McGee, why did you marry that millionaire, Paul Daniels? Let's, uh, let's move on. Anyway, who's that? <laughs> We're going back in time now. Come on then. Clue is in the question. Clue's in the question. Who's that? 
And yes, yeah. Well, you could, I think Dream Winter Pride for the wittiest answer, Clyde Barrow. Uh, yeah, well that's, yes, the Henry Ford. Henry Ford, any colour you like, as long as it's, yes. Who's that then? I think if you don't get that one, if you don't get that one, you deserve to be on the naughty step. Yeah, Mickey. Well, it is Mickey Mouse. I must admit, it is, you're right. But it's Walt. Great story. If you, if you get a chance to read about how Disney World came about in, in Orlando, really clever story. Uh, about when they were actually the, he actually sent in real estate uh, people to buy lots of lots of adjoining sets of land because uh, when they were trying to buy a lot of swamp land in Florida, they, if they knew the Disney Corporation were buying it, the price would rocket it up. Lots of independent people were commissioned by Disney to buy to buy a worthless piece of swamp that all adjoined each other. But they bought it for the best possible price. There we go, quick story. Nothing to do with email marketing, but worth telling. Right, we're on to email marketing now. When was the first email sent? Hey, who's going to go at that one? Mm. Oh, quite a few answers here. 1971, Michael and Liz. Mm. Oh, wasn't even born. Well, actually, if you believe that, you believe anything. Oh, Kevin's gone for night. We've got a different opinion here. It's a bit like uh, the answer is 1971. There we go. And there it was. There it was. What, uh, uh, you know, print from Wikipedia, two machines. There we go. First email sent. And who's that? Final quiz question. Who is that? Does anybody know who that might be? Sending her. First email. Joe's right. It is. It's Olivia Coleman. It is sending her first email. Now, between you and me, who's been watching The Crown? Have you been watching The Crown? Have you? I tell you, we can't. It, we, can say, we can say this, can't we? Doesn't Charles come across as a bit. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's the dividing line between fact and fiction? There we go. Right. Now, how are you thinking? I've been here for 10 minutes and we haven't talked about email marketing. For God's sake, get on with it. Right. Well, let's get on with it then. This is going to go at breakneck speed. First of all, we're going to talk about the trends in email marketing. And we've got a slide to beginners. So the slide is confusing and complicated. No, it isn't. Basically, what it does do, it shows the, the fact, look, particularly at March 2009, the, the actual click rates and the open rates of marketing emails have risen. People are responding more post, post the early part of the year emails. Email marketing is, is happening. It's growing. The reason why was probably why we're all here. We're all sitting at home and we've got in front of a computer and we're probably, there's more time, there's, there's more opportunity. But the story is slightly different. If you look at this, and I'll come ex explain click rates and things in a minute. But for small businesses, it certainly has grown, but the higher than for those businesses with less than 2,000 subscribers. The open rates, click rates are growing and have been since the spring. But look what's happening. Frequency of campaigns has dropped. Rates of clicking are, are growing, activity is growing, but the number of campaigns are falling. So in, you could draw these conclusions from these statistics. They are American, so please accept the fact that not necessarily a transatlantic symmetry. Businesses are sending less often, but you can argue that consumers want to hear more often. And the email is still an effective tool. Small businesses sending what you may describe as weekly or regular updates. And that commuters are keen to engage with organizations they value. And that will go back onto the uh, the opening rates, etc. On that quick, because I've got quite a bit to cover. 
email marketing is alive and kicking because there was a school of thought way back in the 25th of May 2018 with the growth of the growth with the implementation of GDPR general data protection regulations that there was a potential full stop email marketing this was about protection of data was about the acceptance of cookies was about email marketing unsolicited marketing so big topic to cover but if you have got a legitimate reason a legitimate interest in contacting a customer you are quite well to proceed with email marketing providing you give them the option to unsubscribe if you go onto the information commissioner's website there is all sorts of information there about matters relating to email marketing but i thought i'd mention that so you have to proceed with a certain degree of caution right let's talk about some of the measures associated with email marketing right the first measure is classified as the open rate so any idea what the average open rate is the next little click of my mouth is going to give you the answer anyone fancy quick go on the chat line i've got a quick go on the chat line lynn michael goes for 10 lynn 20 david for two percent interesting a difference of opinion the average open rate at the, is, is across all industries and you have some great guesses some great accurate things it's 21 percent now the click-through rate so people have opened it and are clicking through the average click-through rate is oh what we're going to go for here five percent twenty five percent michael 23 for mark what have we got 35 Whoa. much smaller the click-through rate so interesting to see and the final measurement you should take care of is the click open rate now what's all that about i hear you asking the click open rate explains that you'll divide the click through rate by the open rate multiply it by 100 so for example if your email receives 200 clicks and 120 opens your click to open rate is 60 percent but three measurements all relating to email marketing and we'll we'll cover these through next session and the average click to open rate is somewhere between 20 and 30 percent they are the measurements that you will take now we did talk about this in the sort of preamble that it is great to have great open rates click through rates and great click to open rates but the bit we can't cover today is all covered in your google analytics or whatever you do you are asking people they're going to somewhere else so at the back end of this is that make sure you've got your google analytics in place the likes of using hot jar those type of things so you clearly know what people what your your clickers are doing they may arrive on your website but what are they doing next so it's joining the whole thing together so that's where the, the power of google analytics or some forensics that may be in place okay so i'm going to take you on a little guide to effective email marketing campaigns how to deliver successful campaigns well first and foremost mentioned earlier today it doesn't matter how fantastic your campaigns are if you are giving the wrong message to sorry the right message to the wrong audience or vice versa but please make sure that you are constantly updating your database sounds a little obvious check the quality of your data now on the screen are three sites to go to we'll get a copy of the slide so if you haven't your little pen can't go fast enough or a picture that, that you can look at detecting invalid subscriber addresses so you can see zero bounce etc 
to look at your data, your emails, and then look at whether they are valid or not. For many of you, you may have a CRM system, the likes of what I would tend to use for some small businesses, the likes of HubSpot, whereby you're inputting data and it's the quality of your data it's a, it is going to be the most important thing in your email marketing. Make it fresh data, make it valid data, and ideally creating your own. Okay. The second thing I would really suggest that you do, you then segment your data. Now, segmenting, gosh, you know, you know, have shrunk over the years, haven't they? Those are chocolate oranges, haven't they shrunk? It's a bit like Quality Street. You used to get a big tin, now you get a little tin. Here, here's a contrived way of mentioning the fact that you should uh, use segments. <laughs> so uh, in, in, you would look towards segmenting A to C. You may have a slightly different message for different audience, depending on where they are in their customer journey. Are they, earning, are they buying from you? Are they talking to you? So you may think about changing the nature of your campaign relative to where the customer is on their journey. So you tailor your campaign your audience's needs, problems, preferences. It resonates. If you've only just started to talk with a customer, going for the kill, as it were, if I can put it in those terms, probably might not be the right thing to do make sure that your content resonates with the audience will help with all the bounce rates and the unsubscriptions if you are correctly creating a database and segmenting it. What's next on our list? Well, a list of segments and just a typically, I won't read down the whole list, but you, you can tailor your segments and put gender, age, topics, state, uh, but I, I tend to favor where they are in the buyer journey. So, Database segments, what's next? I would highly recommend avoid using free sender domains. What does that mean, Simon? Well, it means this. Make sure that you are sending your emails on the back of a company domain, not necessarily from a Gmail, Yahoo, or Outlook address, from a company domain. Key thing there because it's again it's about going through the spam filters and being recognized and it comes on to this issue about you want to authenticate your emails and avoid spam now on authentication the receiving email service will look at the legitimacy of what you're sending they check who the email is from and they look at how relevant and secure it is so you, you would look at the servers doing that. And there are three methods of email authentication. You may wish to do a little bit of homework. And I'm going to come on to some software providers in a minute or two. But that is the methods of email authentication. So that's why you would want to look upon using a company domain. Associated with authentication is the fact that you want to make sure that your website is secure because the incoming mail servers not only look at the quality, your previous engagement, other reputational factors, but they look at the alignment between the content that is arriving in their inbox as well as the website content from where it comes. So, for example, completely farcical example, if you are an accountant and you're sending information out relating to building, that's a ridiculous example, it's not going to be necessarily aligned. But it's making sure that a lot of your content going out is aligned to website content. And also, to ensure if you haven't done it, also fits in with, S, with SEO and all issues relating to Google's ranking to make sure that your website is safe. So an SSL secure connection using the company domain is extremely relevant in email marketing, as well as being giving a consumers a safe experience. Okay. 
to mention if your website doesn't use HTTPS, browsers may think that your website's not secure. So there's this perception. So it's all about the authentication of the original place in which the emails are associated with. Okay. And next thing on the list is to A, B, or Alpha B to test your email marketing tactics. Right. I would highly recommend that you create two variants of your campaigns and compare their success. So what you will do is create different subject lines, send it out at different times with different calls to action and different visuals. You have A and you have B. So for example, if you have a database, let's say, of a thousand. I would recommend that you think about maybe sending it out version A to 50, version B, say, to another 50, seeing which one works, or you believe it can work, because you'll we'll come on to how to do that, and then you will send version A or version B to the remaining 900. Think really carefully. It's no different to test marketing anything. See if your idea works. The experimenting there. There we go. That's six ways in which to get successful campaigns. So, database, segmentation, pre sender domains, authentication, website security, testing them. And then the key thing, end of it, is to analyze if your campaigns are working. As I mentioned, click-through rates, open rates, unsubscribe rates, but ultimately tying it in to your Google Analytics or whatever method you use, how much money has this generated? How many leads has this generated? What has happened? The other thing to think about is that one hit might not be enough. So you may send out a campaign. You might want to send out a reminder. Many businesses just go for one hit. Oh, that didn't work. Well, you sometimes have to repeat the message. Many people would send it out the same message six times, just with a slight variation. But you think about keeping, actually looking at being persistent. So, so that's a very quick whistle through, but you can circumvent many of these things by actually having email programs, software programs that will actually automate the process for you. Many people wouldn't send necessarily email campaigns from their own email address. You can do so, I'm not saying you don't, because it, 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 but sometimes it's best to think about using an email program. And these software programs do a number of different things. Firstly, they'll create engaging newsletters. They've got templates with a great interface that you can drag and drop and put images in. So the words are being, and the doc is being created for you. They can send out bulk emails that are personalized and targeted. And that is known as marketing automation. Rather than you having a database and sending it out through your own email, doing it individually or sending it blind copying and whizzing it out there, you'd ideally want things to be automated. And naturally, then it's easy to manage because you can segment and track the performance through these programs. Now, I'm going to stop just for a moment and I'm going to go to the chat line and I'm going to ask any of you to put forward on the chat line, any software programs that you are using with success? Because I'm going to take you through a few suggestions I have, but I'd love to hear from you as to which ones work. So we've got two votes. One, Lynn is using MailChimp. Michael is using MailJet. David, the chill instructor, just starting you MailChimp, but haven't sent the first email yet. Well, Neil's a MailChimp fan. 
as is Liz. Well, that's really interesting. Thank you very much for the feedback. I'm going to cover five platforms now that you're not that you may give you a little bit of an insight. Time is quite short, but we'll cover them in great detail because we've got. But here we go. Constant contact, alliteration, or onomatopoeia, I don't know what. Constant contact is a great platform to use. Easy tracking, image libraries, integrated with Facebook, and it's probably the, one of the best platforms if you're using e-commerce. It integrates well with Shopify. The first on your list to consider is constant contact. Next, you might wish to think about is send in blue. This is probably the best platform for beginners. It creates workflows, which is about automatic follow up of emails. So, as I mentioned, sending out and then following sending out. And it's got fantastic AI algorithms. So, it's sometimes best for selecting the times in which to send out. There are some of the high level views send in blue constant contact send in blue anybody have used drip mm. drip is probably the best platform for e-commerce one of the most intelligent it's got the probably the slickest marketing automation and it tends to be associated with e-commerce now, I've just give me three platforms there, and you're probably expecting me to say, when's MailChimp going to appear? <laughs> As if by magic. MailChimp is probably the uh, Hoover, can I describe it? It's a bit like WordPress for websites. It's become, what's more an Americanism, the go-to platform. And the reason why is because it's best known, and it's got that sort of forever free email plan you can send, you can be use it to your heart's content up to a thousand users, but it has got very limited marketing automation features. Now I'm going to take you know, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk now. Oh, and don't forget ConvertKit as well. I'm going to summarize some of the platforms that I would recommend. <laughs> Depending on what you are, if you're a small business, non-profit or a new blogger, I would recommend going with constant contact. If you're online e-commerce, I'd recommend drip. If you're a blogger, content creator, I would run with ConvertKit. And if as a business owner who wanted the most powerful item automation, with email marketing, SMS messages, I would go with Send in Blue. Now, you didn't come on this webinar for me to be a MailChimp advocate. MailChimp, I'm not for one moment suggesting that it's not useful, but I would probably advise you all to have a little look at some of the others I've mentioned. You will get a copy of the slides, have a little look and see which one fits your business best. There we go. So they will provide marketing automation and tools to use. So the next part of our webinar, we'll talk about how to be successful in writing. Now, come on, who is that gentleman there? Who is he? He's got his quill out. Yeah, well, I can't help, but I know uh, for, uh, I'll sometimes get barred from mentioning Shakespeare, but I know it's uh, as you like it. Right. First things first. Now, all these automation tools you may choose to use, you still have to populate them. My first recommendation is to think really hard about nailing your subject line. Now, you can self-diagnose this by looking at the emails into your own personal email or company email. Which ones are you more likely to open? 
it has been proven that I think the optimum is between four and six words. Nail your subject line. So, the borrow a thank you to Ken for using this. It's on the webinar. He used the word intriguing. So you may wish to create a sense of urgency. You make it intriguing, and also the, the effective use of emojis within the subject line, because that's probably the first thing you will see who it's from and what they are saying. This arrived in Simon's inbox at 11.06 this morning. I live, I'm a, I'm a subscriber to the Joseph Roundtree Theatre. And look, Simon, have you heard? Question mark. And there they are, they're open. They're going to be doing shows, live shows there. So, Simon, have you heard? It's personalized, intriguing, and they're telling me they're open for business. Also, this arrived with me on Sunday. A thank you gift from Ed's. Now, who, who doesn't like a thank you? And there we are. Just because I subscribed to Ed's Easy Diner, they're going to give me some free grub. Put it in very layman's terms. But doesn't time fly? Great thing there. So you, you buy your free gift, a thank you gift. And intrigue is think very carefully about absolutely perfecting your li your opening line and there from view cinema also in york will be reunited soon and dot 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 short sharp intriguing some are using emojis some not so just some, some examples now you may wish to think also you may want to think about preview text an example here you might think about also incorporating that within an email not or it is uncommonly used but sometimes the preview text is also relevant now next on my little list after the subject line maybe the use of preview text is actually to think about formatting so i would now that your platforms will do this for you if you're using any of those please make sure the email is mobile friendly the spacing is right and any image discrepancies so if you want to send out test emails to yourself which you can do look at them on a phone look at them on a laptop it, it, it variable variable about whether people see it mobile or other device now also to think very carefully about writing scannable copy what does scannable copy mean? Well, use headlines, bullet points, just like this one. Make sure your paragraphs are short. And then the choice of bold key words. So this sort of three or four second test, the, 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 the intriguing headline, people open up, what's it telling me? And some of the examples I've showed you already, I think, meet this test. And critically, once you've written that, is to use dynamic content. Receiving something that looks like the Rosetta Stone or short Canterbury Tales, I don't think it's going to get people too excited. So make sure it is, as you probably saw with the uh, Joseph Roundtree Theatre, it's personalised, actually just for you. And, and you can do that so you actually feel like it's been written the individual and you can personalize emails especially if your database is correct you got the name of the person as well as their email address okay and can't emphasize enough keep your copy simple please don't write your memoirs keep it the message simple you've got that two three second test now, tend to speak in daily mirror language, delved into daily mirror archives. Some of these headlines are amusing. For those of you who are old enough to remember Euro 96, a very controversial headline on the back page. 
there, and you've probably seen some of those. Remember from the Falklands War elsewhere, which I didn't include, clever use of language, but often in a marketing perspective to take a leaf out of the newspapers, write in Daily Mirror language, write a strong, controversial, interesting, amusing headline, and support it with an image is what the tabloids have been doing for years. Because they want people to walk into a news agent, pick up the paper, passing that one or two second test. Email marketing is also about trying to pass the one or two second test. Clever play on words there. And uh, oh, I won't pass comment on um, the former Chelsea captain. Okay. Critically, on the final tip here is to seek a call to action. What do you want people to do? I mentioned earlier that you may think of your website in the same way. People arrive on your website. What do you want them to do? People arrive and open the email. What do you want them to do? Spoon feed them. So here is just a very simple way you're encouraging people this one give people knowledge and you want them to download something now it's very explicit and you saw in the other emails i've just shown calling people to book or take advantage of an offer a very strong call to action the big button here from the new york times subscribe to debate not division apologies the image is a bit blurred but again the clicking so it's a lovely message in terms of, you know, come here to read about, about debate and discussions. And then just one pound or one dollar a week, one year, buy now. Simple, strong call to action. So question comes up now about time and when to send them. Now, if you're using some marketing automation issues, you can see, I don't expect you to understand that, except I want you to understand this. The highest click to open rates under recent things are 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 6 p.m. It's because clients begin or conclude their day, have the most time to check their emails. With one proviso, as you can see there, there isn't a massive variance. So when you look at the open rates, because behavior has changed with people being at home or constantly in front of a screen. But you may experiment with open rates. Often if you're a business to consumer, when people are sitting down to watch I'm a Celebrity or Emmerdale or whatever you, your poison might be, actually people will have a phone in one hand and be looking. So sometimes you experiment by arriving on an evening at that time and often Sunday morning is perceived to be on the best way as people are at home in bed or relaxing, usually maybe catching up with some work. But this is where I think I'd experiment with times. And there you are. The best times for recent things for highest open rates, believe it or not, were Thursday, which actually is one of the best times for Instagram as well, for whatever reason. The best time for highest click through rates. Tuesday, lowest unsubscribe rates, Mondays and Sundays, highest open rates on a Saturday, lowest bounce rates on a Monday. You know, the, what you take from that, what you will. But I do feel this is where the alpha beta testing works best. What works for you? And you'll have a science associated with it. But worthwhile experimenting and looking at that and looking at your behavior of your performances right so there may be a variation between business to business and business to consumer so the likes of things like this seven cents is a great little tool as it names suggest ai software designed to personalize email delivery times you may wish to uh, subscribe to that as a potential tool to help you along in terms of getting better results and some of the other uh, software I've shown you already may also have that, but this is a specialist organization and a great name, Seventh Sense. Right, what's next? Well, we're going to conclude, I'm going to have a little drink now actually, 
cocktail hour somewhere. I'm going to give you, for the next five to ten minutes, a lot of examples of email marketing and some of the ways in which businesses have used email marketing. And then we'll see how, because one of the issues often raised with email is what shall I talk about? We'll hear. Not a massive fan of the uh, of the content, but it's a welcome email in. So you may think about businesses who bought from you, of the e-commerce is slightly different, but you are using it, email marketing for welcoming people in and clicks through there. Also, here's an example of the sign here. What is that they're a project management business, but they're businesses who've not who either joined them or haven't used them for a while. So it's a welcome or a reactivation. And what's fantastic there, we can help you stay the top of your task list. It's again, again a, a clever play on words. So think about using it for welcomes, reactivation, and again, the same rules that I've spoken about earlier. Then here, to get people started. So again, campaign monitor, it's a CRM system. So using email marketing here, showing people we're here to help. So that you can click through to their, their um, helpline, or except so you've, and you've got tools there to help you along with so getting people started. And ironically, this emerging leaders is talking about their, their company values. And digital marketing do more, and they're talking about what they're doing as an organisation. So they're sharing of their company values with their their um, uh, their clients. And that's something that, in the light of what's happened in the last number of months, you may wish to uh, pivot to your business. So you may wish to go down that avenue. Here, the use of gifs. Unfortunately, it hasn't come up on the screen, but there's this rat, this business. Supply, card supplier printing business here using effective GIFs. So you may wish to think about incorporating GIFs or GIFs into your email marketing. Look at round the corners, get the edges. It's personalized business cards, making case that business cards are on the way out. But again, it's a way that they're using GIFs potentially within their email marketing. Use your use your email marketing here for information and what they're doing is asking a question about electronic signatures and you, the, the call to action is to click through so there's a whole blog there about data privacy so they're using the uh, that for information another example here is just a very simple update from a credit score company spring is coming fresh credit score in the air so it's it's reminding people about their their credit rating but again it's just an update with a lovely image you're thinking about might use it for that purpose also we've seen incentives we've seen gifts given out already but here this is a graphic design business they're giving people incentives they're offering them new sign up if you sign up you get new designs and you can see celebrate the season with new signups designed with social distancing and virtual in mind. So they're offering in the showing people the incentive to, to tap into new potential designs which they can use in their business. Also on the list, let's celebrate. A happy new year. Obviously, it's a little bit out of date, 2016, but again, you're going to be probably sending emails out. Are reflecting on the year, wishing people a Christmas, Merry Christmas. If your database is up to date, you may want to capture people's birthday. So, if, for those of you who sign up, and I know myself, IKEA, I get a little birthday card every year from IKEA with a with an offer to come and use. So, you may wish to capture in your database your clients' birthdays. You can send them a celebration. If not. Can celebrate Christmas, New Year, Diwali, whatever it may be. Natural place in which to promote your blog. So 
here's an example about AI and service. So you're using it as a means of a newsletter, sending out a blog, and there's tips there to offer. So you're giving your clients information. Great one here from a design company showing their visuals, encouraging people to submit photos, and they will turn them into bespoke cards, invitations, Christmas cards. They're showing the before and the after. So using email marketing for visuals, a fantastic way. And again, a lovely call to action. The list goes on. Content marketing. You want it aligned with your blog, but here you are, you know, a free guide, an ebook. So again, you can use email marketing for that purpose. Naturally, as mentioned earlier, a year-end review, telling people what you've done, what you're doing, how you're going to help them in the year ahead. Go for something very hard hitting. The IT apocalypse, cyber security. What would it cost your company if you had a data breach? Again, and there's a little video in there about cyber security, much more hard hitting. Whether you like it or not, don't just survive it, prevent it. You may wish to go down that particular example. I quite like the idea of the of reminding people that again it may be focused very much about where the clients are on their journey and again just to remind people about the support you offer whether you're using chatbots whether you're using customer service great place to go use email marketing for that purpose and the list goes on you're upgrading people print here i've got customers at one particular level and you can now up Grade your subscription. Again, great way of actually using marketing and also survey people. So you may be using SurveyMonkey and others. We want to hear from you and we'll give you an offer. What I'm saying, in effect, you can use email marketing for what there's about 12 different things that are thrown in front of you and one that's very relevant for tax business answers your COVID related questions. People tips and a fantastic photograph there. Again, it's a newsletter, but it's all about giving advice. And we all love a celebration. Ed's Dine has always given me one already. But again, you know, you're celebrating there. Uh, again, a great way of giving some customers value and to help them along. And one of the most powerful ways in which you can use email marketing is to refer people. The best form of marketing invariably is to refer. So you're giving a slack as just done here, incentivizing its existing customers to refer them on. And curiosity. Curiosity kill the cat, did it not? According to Lewis Carroll, people are talking about you on Twitter. Email marketing to you from Twitter. And, you know, very, very um, intriguing. Again, talking about you know, using social listing and tweet scheduling, so you can use it for that purpose. People are talking about you. And finally, as always, use it to follow up. Thank you for what you've done, but also here are some additional things that we may or may not be able to offer you. So, it, that could be you. What you'd like to think is that your clients, your customers, your prospects, whoever it may be, is engaged by what arrives in their inbox. So, thank you very much for listening. Gosh, didn't we cover a lot in three quarters of an hour or so? I hope that's given you a whistle stop tour through email marketing about the platforms you can use, about some of the ways in which you can use email marketing tips in which to get your message out there, and also the means of measuring your success. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to type away on the chat line. So, thank you very much. We'll be going to be back next week to talk all issues of social media and tips on how to market your business. So we'll be back next Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. So without further ado, I'm going to stop right there and go to the chat line. What have we got? 
we have got. Any questions? Oh, or have you been stunned into silence? There we go. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, when AB about AB testing, it's a good good point. I, I would highly recommend that. Thank you very much, Mark, for your kind words. I just hope I've given you a lot of insight there. Quite a lot we've covered. As I mentioned, you'll get a copy of the slides, and you'll if you have a fancy watching this again, oh, it's available as well. And please feel free to take advantage of that. Any other questions? Oh, and Michael's asked, when A-B testing, would you recommend testing multiple variables at the same time or one at a time? Great question. That, yeah, there's no reason why you can't test two or three different messages to two or three different audiences. But if you're segmenting your audience, you may just go with it. I personally favor a couple, but I, I, I think it is about seeing what works and what doesn't you see a hard hitting approach, softer approach, competition approach, etc. Uh, I like two, two would be my favorite my favoured approach, but um, depends on how many you can manage. But I love the idea of creating a winning formula and and seeing what works and sticking with it. But a different audience a different audience may require a different message hope that's helped anything else oh liz has asked what would you suggest is the best amount of emails to present or depend the audience it does depend on your audience uh, um, this is a, it's an interesting point this one you want to be in regular contact with your customers or be a stalker now <laughs> that's probably a bit of a rhetorical question I'm, I'm a big fan of keeping in contact with your customers and ideally you'll see that in the open the open rates the click-through rates so i like the idea of regular contact if you're not communicating with your customers they're likely they're not they'll forget about you go elsewhere but nor do you want to be a nuisance. At least, so much depends on the nature of your business and their buying cycles, but at least once a month. At least once a month. And what a week. Wow, there's a great, so I hope that's helped. There's a great question here from Bernard. Try and read it. I receive a lot of emails from different companies to sell products or services. The emails are often long and most people do not have the time to read long emails. The open rate may be there due to the subject title, but the click-through rate will be low. Readers may be put off by a long email and stop reading after a few lines. Are such emails effective? A fantastic question. If you take the principle of the daily mirror, as I've shown, headline, picture, text, call to action. Headline, picture, text, call to action. And follow this sort of two or three second test. I think that's where you'd have the greatest success. I don't know about you, but as I mentioned earlier in a slightly lighthearted way, if you get an email that looks like, you know, the, say the Canterbury Tales or some, you know, some tome, I don't read it. But I will, if you make it scannable copy, interesting, you will get more, more um, help. Hopefully, great question but i hope i've answered it but yeah experiment see what works but the one thing i would say with email marketing and i'm going to say this gently you all are i can put this to try and find the right words givers as well as receivers you're getting emails in from whoever, Marks and Spencers or whoever it might be, and you're sending them out. You actually you are poacher and gamekeeper. But if you see an email coming in from whoever it might be, and you like the subject matter, and it, it makes you click to open, well, surely you're going to flip that round and adopt 
what you like in the email and recycle it. I'm not suggesting plagiarizing, but seeing what works, what appeals to you and your audience. Do that, alpha B to test it, and voila. Great, well, thank you very much for your question. That is that, is that, I don't want to short circuit anybody. That's conscious. I don't want to, about the, the clock ticking, but any questions, if anyone, so I'll just conclude by saying these things. Thank you very much for listening. As I said, you'll get the copy of the slides, you'll get a copy to go to the recording. If anyone fancies any one to one help, it's there. And if not, you look out uh, on the Humber Growth website because we've got each week we're, back, we're in every Tuesday and Wednesday throughout December, apart from Christmas week, we're going to be here. Pass on hopefully a few tips to each and every one of you. So um, thank you very much for this afternoon. I hope you've learned and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have done, I've achieved my aim. Well, hey, stay safe. Again, <laughs> hello, <laughs> I'm outside. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? I can. <laughs> oh, so, somewhat wrapped up. Hang on. You got a question for I'm gonna better stop better stop um Okay. <laughs> Hang on.